Ladies and gentlemen, come gather around, come gather around, come gather around. Do you know what cheap cars don't have that OCD people need? Gauges, decent gauges, like temperature gauges, oil pressure gauges, voltmeter gauges. Those are kind of useful when you're a little bit OCD. I might be a little OCD. I spell it CDO so that the letters are in alphabetical order. Uh, but we're going to put some gauges in this little turd and uh, so I can be a little happier knowing what's going on with the motor. Let's go! So I searched high and low to find the cheapest set of gauges that I could get and got this Bosch set which while it comes with a bezel that you likely aren't going to be able to place anywhere that looks good, I bought this DIN size triple set that won't actually fit where the goodie package used to be in the existing stereo. I picked up a fascia from another accent at the Wreckers and then I fabricated some little ears that would duplicate the sides of the goodie package and welded them to that angled DIN sized pod thing that I picked up off of Amazon. So installed, it looks like this. You can see a little bit of trim down on the bottom to fit the angled gauge pod. Uh, I got a deck in there that's uh, circa 2011, so it's actually period correct. And it all works pretty decent. It looks okay. It, it fits all right. And maybe not as perfect as an aftermarket thing, but you cannot get these. So I've hooked up that. That's easy. I just tapped into the source that powers the deck. And so when I turn the key on, it goes up to battery voltage. These two are next but there aren't really any easy ports to plug into to get those hooked up. We're going to try and figure that out. There are the option of T-fittings and pipe nipples and things to try and get this. So I could unthread the factory sensor, uh, put the original in there, and then tee in um, the aftermarket one to run the gauges. However, when it's fuel injected, you really don't want to move the factory coolant temperature sensor because everything that it fuels is based on the accuracy of the temperature sender. So while this would probably be okay for oil, not something you want to do the cooling system. So I had this genius plan to tap into the heater hose, which is relatively easy to get to. And I studied the cooling system. It looks like this thing flows in reverse. So when the thermostat opens, hot coolant goes into the bottom of the radiator and then flows its way up to the top, I think. Regardless, um, I looked at the heater hose that was always circulating and, well, they both are, but uh, I figured I'd slice into it. And this is one inch round stock that I just made a little adapter into it. And then I could tap into that with the uh, sensor for the gauge. <laughs> at least that's the plan. Um, one of the hoses, I think one end of the hoses is five eighths. The other end is three quarters or the metric equivalent. So I machined the center down to 5 eighths and added a little bit of a bump on the end to make it stay stuck on the hose nicely and then drilled it as, as big in diameter inside as I felt comfortable doing. I don't remember the size exactly, but keeping in mind this is going to have a pipe thread fitting in there, I wanted to make sure I had enough um, meat for this thing to attach. And, you know, face the ends, make it look nice, file it so it's smooth. And then I plunked it into the milling machine. This, I think I pipe threaded it, I want to say three eighths, quarter inch, can't remember. Whatever uses a seven sixteenths uh, tap drill, I just used a two flute seven sixteenths cutter and plunge milled right through the puppy. And then I was able to cut the pipe threads. Curiously, uh, this actually didn't work. Uh, very well. I'll get to that in a moment. But there it is. Nicely machined. Uh, clamp it all in place. A little bit of sul flow, high sulfur thread cutting oil, and then my threaded adapter in there. And then I'm going to paint it up and make it look all pretty. Woo! So here's the cooling adapter that I machined. It's just out of one inch solid. Uh, turned it down to 5 eighths hose with a little bit of 0.7 shoulder on it to help seal it up. Should be able to fit hose clamps on both sides. I'm just going to slice the heater hose that comes fresh out of the block. So it should be hot enough to give me a reasonable number. And then uh, the, the capillary fitting thing that goes to the gauge plugs into here. It's a mechanical gauge, not electric, which I guess is good. So hopefully that'll work. We're going to put that in. Just going to slice the hose 
and put that right in there as close to the block as I can fit. So we'll get to the coolant, but for now, I'm going to take out the oil pressure sending unit. It is near the back of the block under the exhaust manifold and the coolant passage. I've got a T fitting that I picked up. It's a smaller size than what you saw previously and the right size pipe nipple, some goop on there and I'm going to try and thread this thing in and hopefully it'll work nice. But, lo and behold, I'm going to discover that this would only turn like a thread. So, I need to uh, thread this deeper. So, I got a pipe tap, and this is, I didn't record doing the cutting, but I'm backing it out. When you're tapping into a hole and you don't want the thread uh, debris to fall into whatever it is you're tapping, what you can do is pack the flutes of the tap with grease and those in theory will catch all of the debris and then you don't get any inside. I did stuff a magnet on a stick in there to try and hopefully catch anything that did get in uh, but there's all the grease in there trying to hold it and then once it was threaded deep enough that the pipe nipple would fit then I could thread this guy in just fine and dandy and just snug you don't have to kill it it's pipe thread fitting with uh, uh, thread sealant on it. Here's the heater hose, again near the back of the motor, back of the intake manifold, close or underneath the uh, rubber hose that goes from the filter to the throttle body. And I just cut it with an, uh, a knife, cut it with a knife. And then I stuffed this thing in, cinched it all down and discovered, because haha for me, that the the bulb of the capillary action thing was uh, too long for this so I needed to extend it which you'll see in a moment good shot of my hands there there weren't any good uh, rubber grommets in the firewall that were easy to get to so uh, usually I can find a way of poking things through but this one uh, wasn't it, it, there's, there's nothing so I found a spot that looked pretty good and I used the step drill to feed everything through it's got to be a big enough hole that you can fit the nut for the uh, thermal uh, thermal thermal the thermal thing and I used uh, I think it's a, a Dodge uh, differential rubber plug as a grommet so it fills a big hole but uh, I just poked a hole a smaller hole in the center and sliced it so it would fit in there so I had to do this kind of adapter because of the length of this. So like a smart cookie, I'm going to position this upside down so if there's no air bubbles that would insulate or isolate the, the bulb from the hot coolant. Uh, but it turned out that this actually did not work very well at all. It's, it's the, there's not enough a coolant touching the end of that bulb and uh, it never read an accurate temperature. It was like 30 degrees too cold. So, uh, this is me a couple of days later, a couple of weeks later, draining the coolant, puking all that into a tray that I recently cleaned out. I, while that's draining, I ran the Teflon line or whatever it is. This is the compression fitting, and I screwed in like a 45 degree elbow so I could actually get this to clear everything under there and then just tap it in to get oil pressure to the gauge. That worked pretty slick actually. For the past couple weeks I just had a plug threaded in but now we're hooking it up and I wrapped it in hose so that it's a little bit more protected from temperature and abrasion. Instead of the heater hose I'm going to pull out this uh, tube passage that goes under the exhaust manifold that goes from the back of the water pump to the back of the cylinder head. Uh, as far as I understand it, this is going to be constantly circulating coolant through the motor while it's heating up. And uh, I'm going to tap into that right about there. Here's a bit I made. It's 5 8 UNF. Uh, whew, I forget what the center is. I think it's one size under 7 16ths, but I could be wrong. I clean the surface where I want it to go. Uh, this tube is an inch and a quarter, so I just beveled the back with inch and a quarter so it'll stick on really nice. We're doing silicon bronze TIG welding so that I have a nice good seal and it's not so hot that I blow holes into the tube. It's a pretty significant difference in thickness of materials here. I did two passes with the silicon bronze just to make sure I got it for sure. 
I do like TIG with silicon bronze. It's quite fun. Clean, tidy, smooth. Nice finish to it. So once that is done, I drilled through the center. Pretty sure it's one under 7 16 uh, Now I got a hole all the way through. It should be beautifully sealed. And that should be just enough to have the tube or bulb or whatever it is fit through and still have good coolant going past it. Don't want it to corrode, so I cleaned her off. I have some welding, weld through primer, but it is self etching. So I'm really just using it for the self etching feature. And I gave it two coats of that. And I gave it a coat of Ford engine gray because it kind of looked like the original color of this tube. And, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to have some good corrosion resistance in there. Then once the paint was cured, I squeezed that puppy back in there. I put a little bit of a goop on the, I, I used thread sealant on the O-ring just to try and help it seal fairly well. I know it's not thread, but it should seal up some voids pretty nicely. That got argued into place. And then that rusty looking uh, eight mil bolt that you see that I'll be picking up in a second, that clamps it all into place and then we're good. The hardest part was uh, trying to thread the the end of the sensor into that because it's like I can't get my old man arthritic hands to get in there. And then, you know, I tried my best to get some good camera pictures for camera views for you, but I need, really need a camera guy. You know, if anybody's interested in holding the camera while we do this, you're welcome to apply. Eh? The work is hard, but the pay is low. Then I think I zap strapped a bit of the rubber hose that surrounds the oil pressure tube to something under there. It might have been a radiator hose or something, just to keep it from flopping around. Crazy camera angle. You're seeing under the exhaust manifold, behind the water pump, close to the pulleys. And I'm trying my best to get this in with fingers that just don't cooperate. So finally got her up there, got her threaded in. Just got it. Try it. Thread it in. Oh my gosh. Good heavens, this is actually, you need smaller hands to do this. Or it probably would have been better without the gloves. But I tend to wear the surgical gloves because grease and oil in my skin don't, don't like each other very much at all. But once I got that threaded in with all of my fingers, finger strength in there, I put a wrench on it. And what looks like a couple of octopi wrestling is my hands trying my best to get that nut done up nut tight with a 5 8 stubby uh, combination wrench. So, hooray. It uh, doesn't leak, so that's really what matters. So snugging that up as best I can. When I reuse coolant, I tend to run it through a paint, uh, paint filter. It's a little paper guy used for straining your paint when you put it into a paint gun. Works pretty good for reusing this coolant. With the engine running, I've got a mirror on a stick and a flashlight so I can see if there's any leaks because I don't want to find out later that it's leaking. Lots of coolant burning off. And this is the little coolant bulb. Not a drop coming out of there either, which is certainly handy, I guess. So it looks like we have a success. We have the engine running and up to temperature, showing about close to 200 on the gauge, about 14 and a bit on volts, and idling at around 21 or 22 PSI. Cold, this thing was 60 PSI. Uh, fresh oil in it too, just now. I changed the oil today. So, well that's, uh, the gauges are working pretty good. So while you don't need to fabricate your own stereo adapting kit thing, uh, you do have to fabricate your own gauge pod to go in there. So uh, there we have it. Stereo, gauges, not the easiest of tasks to hook them up, but it's probably not any worse than any other vehicle that has nothing to connect to. So uh, uh, tapping into the oil line so I can still use the uh, factory idiot light sensor and 
uh, tapping into the tube that comes out of the back of the water pump um, to circulate the whole motor's coolant all over the place. It reads about five degrees cooler than the motor and that might be just the location of where it is or it might be the uh, accuracy of the gauge. Doesn't really matter, I do know it's working and it's reading reasonably accurate to keep me happy. So, as always, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you again.